don't usually get nervous, but uh, I do now. <laughs> uh, I'm right, but uh, it's not a bad thing, you know. I enjoy that nervousness. Okay, so I'm signing on. So I'm here to talk about a bit on photography. Um, we all photographer, and uh, or one way or another, we all uh, kind of like within that process, we either take pictures or we look at them. And uh, the technical uh, bit on photography is kind of like you don't need to go to art school, you don't need to go to colleges to learn because you just click, and there you go, you got technically perfect pictures. So, so you can skip all those hard work, studying and learning and stuff, and you can just go straight into the industry with your iPhone or smartphone. Uh, so in a way, I so approachable, so everyone can do it. And uh, this is what I like the most because it's just like, there's nothing so special, you can do that, I can do that. So what's it all about it? But as long as you know the languages or you know the tricks, a simple photograph can actually do so much more than just a photograph. Uh, while, when I was in Wales, I actually studied documentary photography because I so much want to be a world correspondent. Because I think, wow, this is so cool, going to war zone, or oh, eating gula, come back to my hero. <laughs> so all those beautiful women would come to me, yeah, I'm a hero, I'm the man. <laughs> But uh, I think that actually do it, not because I'm nervous, but uh, the game isn't actually what I thought. I think I might be doing something changing the world or saving the world, but eventually I can, so, so I'll do something else. And what, one thing actually uh, made me kind of like upset is uh, sometimes the amateur actually beat us. It's like, what? <laughs> So I'm going to show you some example of an uh, amateur, like actually beating the professional. So look at this photograph, the tag is horrible. Color is wrong, composition is horrible, <laughs> nothing is right, okay. But that picture is being on the front pages on all the magazine and all the paper around the world back in the 1971. It's actually a picture taken with one of the survivors during a pain, uh, airplane crash. Uh, so some days back in 1971, a plane carried 45 passengers crashed into some stony mountain. But amazingly, more than half of them actually survived the crash. But the problem is, no one knows where they are, so they were stuck there for 71 days. And in order to survive, they actually eating human corpses just to survive. Well, actually, it's, it has a film titled that Alive, I think back in 1993, actually describing that story. And that picture was actually taken by one of the swords, uh -huh, and showing one of the uh, guys actually eating human flesh. Okay? And the guy right up like the picture, he's actually fixing a radio, and uh, that radio, they can actually listen to the news and they actually find out that the searching group actually cut it off, so they have no hope to be rescued. But after that 71 day, two of the survivors actually walked out of the mountain. They spent 11 days, and eventually they get rescued. And uh, in a way, uh, uh, this documentary photographer is like a really valuable, valuable document, because for most of the uh, situation like that, the professional usually arrive too late because we have to get to know oh something's happened but it's, it's been happened already so we actually go there <laughs> and photograph in the aftermath okay so so that's why I don't do photojournalistic journalistic work anymore so I'm like what's the point doing it <laughs> <laughs> and something more rela relaxed perhaps so this is another cracky picture <laughs> it's not sharp and uh, again, composition is horrible, and uh, what actually is going on? You see that old guy fairly, I don't know, I mean, what's going on? Well, this work is actually by one of the quite famous 
British artist. His name is Richard Billingham. And he did a series of work on his family, and this is actually his dad. Okay, it's going on. <laughs> and uh, which is actually coming come from Britain, and uh, his family is living on social security, so they don't they're out of work. His dad is an alcoholic, drinking every day, and his mom is a heavy smoker. Okay, and uh, so basically, they he's actually grow in that environment, and he actually studied painting at colleges. And he took this photograph, kind of just for fun. Okay, so like, well, what I really see my dad, like, that's what he do. And he kind of shared those pictures with his like, schoolmate, and they're having a laugh. But uh, one day, a professor kind of like walked by. Hey, what, what you got looking at? And, he, and the professor actually looked at the photograph and thought, oh, these are great stuff. Okay, give that to me. I'm going to make you famous. And just like that, he just went famous overnight for all this work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a cat fly over, so yeah, what? <laughs> well, it's actually it's a whole series, there's only two examples here. Okay. And uh, the reason we should actually make it to the top, uh, he's actually from that family. Uh, like not not living well, like actually it's actually one of the uh, social problem in Britain. Perhaps like someone may know better. It's like people are bored, drinking too much, and uh, asking money for the government, uh, government and blah blah blah. And if a professional photographer go and cover that story, he would not have done it like this. It's just the actors would kill kill that photographer. <laughs> but because this photo is so organic, it's so real. So people tend to believe in it more. So that's why he made his name. So let's talk about a professional then. It's one of the work by a Brazilian photographer. His name is Salgado. It's really well known actually. He's the guy. And his picture is so beautifully done. Like all the lighting, black and white, all those mood. But the problem is, in a way, uh, because they were done so too beautifully, and people actually appreciate that that human suffering, like a piece of art. So the auction house would actually take on and end up selling a quarter of a million. So it's actually Iran, Iraq, Iraqi war, and uh, it's actually like kids feeding artificial limbs. It's there are too many landmines, like all the kids like, have their like, bone like, arrays. And, uh, so it's actually human suffering. Some of the refugee camps in Africa, all these are human cultures. Because they are too nice. And we thought, why don't you buy a print and put it up in a dining room and just to appreciate that uh, fineness of that uh, master uh, photographer? But these are human suffering. Again, so, I, I, so that's why I don't get into photojournalism. Because A, the amateur B does, B, well, I try to do my job like good, but. Uh, I just can't get over that ethical, like moral, that, that stage. So I decided that I won't go into photojournalist or whatever. But uh, what I'm going to do, I study that. And uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I have a job, and uh, but I still have to make a living. But I love photography, so I'm going to do. So I turn myself into an artist. Okay, and. Uh, and being an artist, you know, you know those artists are troublesome. <laughs> and uh, one of the things about me is like, uh, I never actually take on any commercial assignment. Perhaps like some guy come to me, hey, someone, I'm going to pay you ten thousand dollars to uh, take my portrait. You do do that? I say no. Okay. I just don't do it. I just 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 go away. <laughs> and, uh, but I usually do the thing or take the picture which people don't pay me. Or even I have to pay them. Okay, they have to have a lot. Let's talk about travel. Okay. Uh, it's actually related to photojournalist because in one way or another, yeah, those photojournalists is, is just another kind of travel. They are kind of like more adventure travel. They they kind of go into like 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 so so uh, adventure like places to have their to take picture or whatever in a way. It is like that because during my study, uh, I, I kind of like doing an undercover job for newspaper and stuff, and I kind of got the excitement. Like, 
I said, oh yeah, I'm going to study history, I'm part of it. And I got, sometimes I got carried away. So, so in a way, uh, for me, travel, um, I'm too busy, and I don't have money to go. Uh, I really don't have money to go, and uh, I want to get away, but I just can't. So for me, I don't have to necessarily like, like get on a plane and go to some whatever places. For me, I just have to go down the corner. Okay? And uh, I actually did a project on that. And because in a way, uh, even though that corner, I walk that corner every day, but every single day, I see different people and different faces. And I find it really like, interesting. Oh, I was like, I would be like just standing for like 10 or 15 minutes just watching people going past. And, oh, I wonder why she just in red and, and I wonder what, what is he doing there? And you know what I mean? I just watch people in pass and I, I kind of like, I, I'm, I'm chopping already in a way. So I actually spent one year <laughs> going to the same places at the same time and taking one photo of each day. Even though it is raining or thunderstorm, whatever. Okay. In a way, uh, the, actually, I'm show my camera. So that's the camera I use. <laughs> it is big, it is heavy. Ah, yeah, it is. But the reason for me using this big camera is I want people to notice it. I'm taking photographs. <laughs> so they, they can't, like, you know, what I mean? they can't miss me as well like that. Okay. And I hope that uh, because of that noise the machine, they will come talk to me. Because I want to talk to people. And I don't have that excuses. You know what I mean? You don't just like, 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 like in NPR, perhaps like you just talk to the person next to you. You know what I mean? You got like, are you nuts or something? <laughs> so the camera is a tool for me to break the ice. And having that, I actually get to talk to a lot of people. And somehow, perhaps, a a couple from Germany come to me and talk to me. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm in Germany. And perhaps the other day, a nice looking Japanese woman come to me and I'm in Tokyo. <laughs> so that's uh, really kind of like excited to me. So I don't actually have to go out in order to travel. What I do is just I do whatever everyday duty, but uh, I look at it in another way. So that's actually uh, February, and, uh, March, uh -huh. April, uh, so on and so on. And uh, one thing about traveling is uh, we travel to take pictures, or we want to take pictures, and we travel. So they got such a funny relationship in between travel and photography. But I found my own way to travel, and I found my own way to photograph my travel, to photograph my travel. And to uh, round up this talk, may I ask for oh, you my uh, permission if I can take a picture of you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, I, I try to do it quick, yeah. <laughs> but I'll do three more minutes. Okay. It usually takes like, like half an hour to have this set up and take a photo. <laughs> but uh, I kind of like set it up before I it. So I'll go to uh, my focus there, so it should be alright. Huh? <laughs> and uh, yeah, like, yeah, I said it up before, so, yeah, but, uh, so I'm going to take the reading, it's quite, quite dark. Okay. And that's actually the thing. Okay. I'm still old fashioned. I'm going to load the film in my camera. Clocking the shutter. Setting up and say, no mistake alarm. <laughs> it's so many steps involved, I and mean, you make a step incorrect and you can't get a picture. Okay, and I need you to stay still 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Only 30 seconds. I mean, I, I used to like, did I in the portrait and ask my friend to pose for me, I, but they have to stay still for like three minutes or something like that. So 30 seconds is nothing, really, believe me. That's all. Like, uh, Well, you want to smile, you can smile, but you have to like, do that. <laughs> okay, ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Red hand, 15. Oh, I missed that, okay. 20, I think. 10 more seconds, 10 more seconds. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>